Good morning and welcome back to the one in the Celtic fans view this Monday morning. Now I named this video has have the boards have the PLC let Brendan Rodgers down. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But first of all, what I want to do is I want to listen to the one and only Michael Stewart, who seems to be under the impression that although Celtic weren't at their best, he believes that Celtic will not bring in any more players or significant players. And I'm, I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. But let's listen to Michael Stewart, first of all, um, talking yesterday. <clears throat> yeah, I don't think there's any question about that. It's um, a fair description. It was... Um... Like uh, you know, quite a few sort of uh, games have have panned out for for Celtic this season. He's particularly at home. There's been there's been a few, but they've they've taken a long time to break down the opposition. Yesterday, obviously, they scored very early on, missed uh, a penalty and the retake. But yep. they they deserve to win the game. There's no question about that. They were the better team, but you're expecting and thinking that um, they were going to be more comfortable in you know, the last couple of minutes, Ross County. There was um, a few forays up the park where they looked like they were potentially going to be able to open Celtic up and and maybe you know uh, sneak a point out of uh, out of Parkhead. So, yeah, that's that. But that always happens, Michael. So when you look at when you look at the games, when you look at games at Celtic Park, teams sit back for the best part of eighty minutes and then they have a go the last ten minutes if they've got a chance, um, and and teams do well to try and make Celtic work hard for their victories. So. It was um, very much a, a laboured performance, as you said. Yeah. There, I think Brendan Rodgers mentioned it after the match, Mikey, that you know th they're not going to hit the heights every single week. I, I think Celtic have hit the heights when they've had to yes. this season. When Definitely. you look at that, the Rangers games, uh, the one at Ibrox, and then the one at Celtic Park at the time. Although the one that did matter was obviously the Kilmarnock game at, at the beginning of the season. Celtic didn't turn up that day, and we were put out of the cup, which. Uh, was unfortunate, but we move on from that. We've, we are halfway, we're just over the halfway mark of the season. Turn of the year, they turn it on when they have to. Yeah, and you know, at the end of the day, it's three points. You know, they're, 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 and they keep their their run going. Yeah, uh, that's a uh, that's another fair assessment there. That you know, when, whenever they've been needing to put in a big performance, yeah. they, they they have. There's been a few sort of surprising um, performances where they've, they've really been below par and they've suffered. You know, Kamarnik have been able to turn them over on a couple of occasions at Rugby Park and in both those instances, it's been quite alarming, um, the performances there. But when it's come to, you know, those big games that you're talking about, they have stepped up and performed well. But I mean, the other thing that you can't discount for Celtic is that the there's a number of big players that have not really had mm, a definitely. settled run in the team this year for a number of different reasons. Carter Vickers came back yesterday, but... Um, you know, didn't play the full 90 minutes. Um, Hitati has barely played. Um, Maeda's been very much in and out. Um, yep. And Abada's just coming back to things just now. They've lost exactly. Jota. Yep. So when you look at, uh, you know, things like that, that is inevitably going to have an element of uh, disruption to the, the flow of their team. Yes, it is. And when you think about it as well, Arden Moy played, he was playing this time last season and he was playing absolutely fantastic. And as was Carl Starfield. So we had a bit more of a settled team. Now, are the fans turning on Brendan Rodgers? Obviously, by the end of the game yesterday, there was a small section of fans that decided to let the anger known we are in the middle of a title battle we are in the middle of the title battle we're not running away with the title and uh, some people think that we should be um it does a disservice to the rest of scottish football to think that we're automatically entitled to move forward and retain the title at will um you have to you have to play the teams that are in front of you at the end of the day and you have to beat them on a weekly basis so they they need to they, you know, they need to sign some starting 11 players. It doesn't look like it will potentially happen this January window, but certainly in the summer, they're going to have to, I think, sign some starting 11 players that are going to improve that starting 11 to to move things on. Because obviously, Brendan Rodgers has gone back to Celtic to, um, you would imagine, make a fist of Europe and make a real yeah. sort of dent on, uh, yeah. on things there and, and progress the club forward. And at the moment because of a number of those reasons, the, the disruption to their starting yeah. 11 as is at the moment and the lack of progress on the transfer market, they've not really been able to do that yet. 
So, with that being said, has the board, have the board, I mean, we can all look back to the summer and we can, we can, we can re-remind ourselves how Brendan Rodgers got the job and what happened, the run-up to him getting the job, the meeting that he had in Mallorca with Callum McGregor, and the three-hour lunch talking about Celtic before he even signed the contract, um, at, asking Callum what was needed at the club, and everyone was of the, the thought back then that we only need three or four players. Brendan Rodgers was, was offered the same deal that Ange Postacoglu was offered, and uh, but was he offered the same? It was all rumoured last last season, but remember, it was all rumoured that we were going to spend, we had a 30 million war chest, we had a 30 million war chest this summer to spend, and, and that didn't transpire. We, we made 30 million in the transfer market, and maybe that's where people got wrong. People thought that we were going to spend 30 million, where really the, the noise coming out of Parkhead, the 30 million was what they wanted to bring in in transfer fees. Uh, tell me what you think about that in the comments. The fact that Celtic did spend around about 15 million last summer and brought in quite a lot of players. Um, Brendan Rodgers obviously thought that he, he would get his own way with players coming in this window. People are a bit disappointed in the fact that Celtic have not got their business done early. The one and only, um, that, that is uh, obviously the noise with the Bologna thing, but the Bolo uh, Sidney Van Hoydonk, um didn't play for, AC, for um, his team against AC Milan. Now, they were... They, the, the commentators said that he's the absent man up front. He's not even in the squad due to an apparent move to Celtic on the cards. Wait a minute here. This guy hasn't been in the squad all season. This guy has been out the squad all season. He fell out with the manager. Is this really the type of player that we want to bring into the club? If you remember, Ange Postacoglu used to say, he said he would phone the players and they would get into the mindset of the players. I can tell you now, if that's the mindset of uh, Van Hooydonk, um, he's a bit much. He's a bit like his father. His father fell out with Celtic, and he, he cost us the title back in the 1990s. So um, I'm not too sure about Von Hoydunk. When you look at it, also uh, there is one legend of Celtic who was in the press yesterday talking about Brendan Rodgers and the transfer activity, and it's the one and only Kenny Dalglish. Kenny Dalglish believes that Rodgers will miss out on Celtic transfer demands as the transfer window comes to a close. Celtic looking for quality. It's really hard to try and find that quality in the later, day, the later days of the transfer window. It's usually players that are wanting away or players that aren't getting played by the team that um, get put out on loan towards the end of the window. Although Celtic have done not too bad uh, in this window previously, Kenny Dalglish believes that, look, um, he doesn't think it's going to happen. He doesn't think it's going to happen at all. He says, so far, Nicholas Kuhn has arrived from Rapid Vienna for around about three million. Will Celtic add a striker to the ranks before Thursday? I'm not sure, says Kenny Dalglish. At this stage, it's hard to get someone who is better than the players already there. That is very true. As long as Kyogo stays fit, he says, he says they'll be fine. They have O as backup is O the answer. I would like to see Rocco Vata getting more game time and getting a chance. But when it's only 1-0, uh, the, the manager is a bit reluctant to bring on some of the younger players, especially when uh, it's all in the balance. And uh, heavens forbid that the, the manager was to bring on one of the youth players and then they were sort of drop points at the weekend. They would blame the youth players and they would blame the manager for not playing experience which the manager has been talking about. Anyway, if, if Kuhn is the only player that's to come into the squad, um, and, and I think there's there bound to be one more comes in, surely. If, it, if, it ha if there isn't, if there isn't, has the board let Brendan Rodgers down? And you can see the, the way that Brendan Rodgers um, bit back at the press at the weekend, the way that he's, he sort of said, look, if it's not me the fans are moaning about, it's the board. If it's not the board, it's the team. It says it's just one of those things, but have the PLC as we get into the later dates, the later stages. I remember we should recover, we should recoup this on Thursday afternoon. We'll talk about it. Um, but at this stage of the window, do you think that the board have let Brendan Rogers down by not getting the targets that he maybe wanted in in this window? Yes, it is a difficult window to try and get one in with five days left of the window. It's not even five days now, is there? Um, Celtic supporters will be keeping close eye on every update. They'll be checking social media, they'll be checking Twitter, they'll be checking everything to see whether we get another player in. If we don't get any more players in, 
personally, I think um, we need we definitely need someone in to replace Greg Taylor now that he is out injured. Celtic fans have been calling for that for long enough, and it is just not acceptable the way that Celtic are going at the current moment. The tide is turning. The tide is turning. Is it turning on Brendan Rodgers or is it turning on the boards? Tell me your thoughts in the comment section. Tell me your thoughts on the live tonight. We will be live at 6 p.m. Celtic part-time. Make sure you join us then. On that note, have a fantastic day, Celtic fans all around the world. <laughs>